What up, players? It's Wallboss Tay up in this mode, doing a proper unboxing of this Bane Blade super heavy tank for the Warhammer 40,000 Imperial Guard faction of the Warhammer 40,000 game. This is the new kind of art, artsy, artsy fartsy style that Games Workshop is going for with their with their boxed sets. It looks like eventually they're going to change over all of their old boxed kits to kind of match this. It's got a kind of Photoshop looking, very dark and spacey, futuristic looking background. And then the model pictured in the front, very bright and colorful. And uh, for those of you out there who have not played this game or do not collect these miniatures, just a word of warning that it is not going to look like this. It's, uh, you're gonna have to paint it yourself, it's gonna look completely different, so... Uh, I love it. In the back, it shows you all the different variations. They each have their own rules. You don't have to paint it in this color scheme. This is for the, I guess, the ubiquitous, the, the favorite Imperial Guard faction of Games Workshop at the time. Cadian Shock Troopers, which is green with these beige stripes on it. But you've also got these alternative color schemes, like the Armageddon Steel Legion here. That looks like more of an urban kind of warfare and a, on an ash world kind of thing. And you've got the Talarn Desert Raider Stormlord back here, which is painted more like a sandy desert theme. Uh, each of them have their own different little insignias on it, different kind of transfers, which we'll look at it. And they've all got different armament. So make sure when you're building one of these up, if you do not play the game, that you get the set of rules or at least you know what you're supposed to be building because this is such a pricey model if you build it a certain way and it is not the correct way you're supposed to build it then it's just it's not going to end out well for you um, that said because this new kit allows you to build all six of the variants it's a little bit pricier than the original Bane Blade was which was split up into two boxes you could get the Bane Blade with one different kind of alternate way of building it, or you could get a, a different kit which had the other four variants included in it. But this one lets you build all six of them. So it's gonna be a little bit pricier because you get a little bit more bits than you would. So let's take a look at these instructions. I'll focus out a little bit. There we go. So it shows you how you can build first these two variations, which known as the normal Bane Blade and the Shadow Sword. And what's great is that with the 3D images, you're able to really see what goes where and how they look in, in three dimensions. Um, a lot of small, small pieces. And I don't think, yeah, it doesn't look like they're numbered. So you really have to go by, by looking, just kind of eyeing out what goes where. So, so you might want to take care that you don't glue. There are a lot of things in the instructions where it has these signs with the glue bottle crossed out. So you definitely do not want to glue it. Um, I know when I'm building kits and putting them together, sometimes I get very overzealous and I want to glue them on, glue everything. But yeah, some things are meant to swivel. So they say, don't glue, don't glue these sponsons. And uh, yeah, and then it shows you, takes you from the beginning to the end with what it should look like. And then it shows you how to build the alternative ones with the bigger cargo area in the back. So those are what the instructions look like. How to put together, the, or what the different weapons are gonna look like when they're all put together, depending on what you choose. Before we get to the model, we'll look at the transfer sheet. So these have a lot of different kinds of armies. You've got V for the Vostroyan tanks. You've got the Armored Fist holding the lightning for the Armageddon Steel Legion. You've got the Gate of Cadia for Cadian Shock Troopers. And then you've got a lot of different uh, large numbers to mark the units. You've got kill stripes for the barrels. You've got uh, these awesome looking kill markings, which you put on the, I think the turret to show how many enemies they've, they've uh, managed to shoot down. And yeah, it's, you've got insignias in black, in white, uh, different very Im Imperial Guard looking things that you can use to decorate your tank with. So now let's take a look at the different sprues. The first sprue I've got here, I have no idea where any of these things go. This looks like the turret. It's got 
what I assume to be the two halves of the regular Bane Blade weapon. Oh, look at how huge this thing is going to be. You've got some crewmen standing up in the cupola. You've also got a crewman on his feet if you want to use as in um, as just a body for a regular Imperial Guard officer. I might take this and use him to represent, uh, if I ever start a Cadian army, a, a lieutenant or a sergeant. You've got different heads here. You've got one with the peaked cap. You've got these ones with helmets. Uh, very, very cool. Very, very gothic looking. This one here on the end is my favorite. I think he's got Let's zoom in. He's got a little gas mask. That's <laughs> so cool. There you see the other different variations of the heads. There's always the one that's screaming. Then there's this guy with the visor on. Really, really cool. You, you see that some of them can be armed with different weapons. The sword. Drive me closer so I can hit them with my sword. All right. So there is that sprue. So I guess this is the turret. This must be the, the first one I showed, must have been the top of the turret. And then we've got this one. So a lot of them have different weapons on the pintle. Like this one's got a heavy stubbers, looks like. And a lot of them have pintle mounted weapons. Uh, like I said, and, and there are also ones that are on the sponsons, inside the sponsons and sitting on top of the sponsons. Sponsons. Which is why you have so many bolters and heavy bolters here. Smoke launchers there. There's the piping for the back uh, ladder to climb up into it. Heavy flamers. back with the fuel tanks. This looks like the shrine of the Aquila in the back. You've got this. I really like the Stormlord. I'm still not sure. I, I got a lot of good votes for the Stormlord, building the Stormlord instead of the Bane Blade, but I might go with the regular Bane Blade, even though the I love this like back crew section for the for the Stormlord. It's just open, open to the air, decking in the back. It looks really, really cool. Towing hooks. Now we're getting to the back. Not real interesting, uh, just pieces that go on. But I mean, look at the detail for the, the double-headed eagle, for the headlights here at the front. All just all these individual rivets. These models used to be produced only by Forge World. You could only get them as resin. Resin models, giant super heavy tanks. Before Games Workshop said, no, we want to make money with them. So they kind of took over for them. But yeah, I mean, in plastic, you can really get some good detailing on the individual treads, the rivets and everything. One single round base. And here's the last one. Yeah, for the other side. Okay, so I, I had like one little ammo box from the one of the heavy stubbers fall off. I guess it was just inside. So my plan is for Apocalypse to build. I know War Painter Brian is probably way, way ahead of me. I had a real life stuff come up and so had to unfortunately put the super heavy on hold for a while, but I'm gonna be charging full steam ahead with my super heavy building and, and stuff. And what I'm gonna do from now is I think I'm gonna be building and filming as um, kind of doing a time lapse thing so that you can, you don't have to sit and watch me glue and wait for the glue to dry. And I'll just uh, film clips of me putting this thing together and um, <clears throat> Kind of doing it in a fast-forwarded time-lapse thing with some narration on what what worked for me, what didn't work, what was uh, hard or what was difficult or what was easy, and then we'll take it slower once we get to the the painting section. But yeah, I think I'm gonna do a bane blade because bane blades are pretty all-purpose, even though 
the Storm Lord looks so cool. I guess I'll, I'll wait until until I get my second Bane Blade to do that and uh, try not to get killed by my lady boss for buying another Bane Blade. So the theme for Apocagist is warm versus cold or cool, hot versus cold. So I think that's really cool, really awesome, excellent, because for my Vostroyans, they're in Ice World. So I'm gonna be building up a Vostroyan Super Heavy Bane Blade and trying to do some snow and ice effects on it. So stay tuned, you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.